For now, though, just two points to leave you with. First, Fox News is behind us, as they have been since the very first day. Second, we've always apologized when we're wrong, and we'll continue to do that. That's what decent people do. They apologize. But we will never bow to the mob, ever, no matter what. Hey, YouTube. If there's one thing that I constantly warn about, it's the left's ability to rationalize just about anything. They do things that in any other instance would be called racist or fascist or tyrannical, but when they do it, they rationalize it. In their latest bid to silence all dissent and opposition, the Democratic Party organization Media Matters has been purposely taking old Tucker Carlson quotes out of context in order to pull advertisers away and hopefully get them off the air. So that takes me to what's going on right now in the media, chasing after Tucker Carlson and Pirro, the latest provocateurs on the Trump train over at state TV. They should apologize for what they said about every minority group they could target collectively, though Carlson is the main mouth. As we near the 2020 elections, the media wants to make sure that they have as few dissenting voices out there as possible to give Democrats their best chances in the 2020 election. In case you haven't noticed, they're attacking left-wing and Democrat party opposition on all fronts. At our universities, groups like Antifa and By Any Means Necessary are using violence to shut down speakers like Ben Shapiro that oppose left-wing ideology and are masters at refuting their dogma. They have nobody that can take on Ben Shapiro, so they just use violence to shut him down, and then they get backed up by the media. I'm arguing that Trump was wrong to create a moral equivalency between bigots and those who oppose them making them equal wrongs. Those hateful few who take solace and encouragement from the president's efforts, my message to you is simple. Be aware there are many more of us who see you as unequal, as less than, and you will be opposed at every turn. On the internet, we have tech giants such as Google, YouTube, and Facebook that are using a variety of tactics to silence and censor their opposition. In the Democrat Party media now, they're trying to shut down all the most powerful and articulate voices that are in opposition to the Democrats and to the left, such as Tucker Carlson and Jeanine Pirro. The organization that started this latest assault on Tucker Carlson and Fox News is the very same organization that's been smearing people in right-leaning media, going all the way back to the Bush administration, and their tactics haven't even changed. A great example of this comes from back during the Obama administration. At the time, Rush Limbaugh was one of the loudest and most articulate voices against the Democrat Party and the Obama administration, so of course, Media Matters targeted him. He had been criticizing stolen valor fake soldiers that were members of the Iraqi Veterans for Truth organization. Limbaugh had been talking with a caller and referred to one of these fake soldiers as a phony soldier. Media Matters took this clip, put it out there, and spun it that he was calling actual soldiers phony soldiers. You know, it, it's not. And, and what's really funny is they never talk to real soldiers. Uh, they they like to pull these soldiers to come up out of the blue and spot the media. The phony right? soldiers. Talk, the, the phony soldiers. If you talk to a real soldier, they are proud to serve. They want to be over in Iraq. They understand their sacrifice, and they're willing to sacrifice for the country. They joined to be in Iraq. At the time, the military was very pro-Fox News, very pro-Republican, very pro-Rush Limbaugh, and they were trying to tear him away from the soldiers. It was a straight-up hit job. What he said was that fake soldiers that were criticizing the war with this organization were phony soldiers. He wasn't saying that troops who criticized the soldiers were phony soldiers, which is what the media wanted you to believe. You see what they did there? And this is exactly what they're doing now to Tucker Carlson. I can't emphasize enough how dangerous this latest assault is on opposition media. If they were successful in taking Fox out somehow, that would leave nobody out there speaking in opposition to the Democrat Party propaganda that's being spewed from the vast majority of the rest of the media. Fox exists as a counterbalance. It came about because the media was only putting out one point of view and there was clearly another point of view, another perspective that needed to be heard and that's what made Fox so big in the first place. Something that's very ironic to me is that they're trying to take down Janine Pirro for criticizing the hajib, which is a tool of oppression that gets women killed around the world but for some reason is promoted by feminists and left-wingers in America. Uh, Janine Pirro's comments, those were prompter people. Uh, other people had seen them, okayed them, allowed them to go on. And, and she endorsed them. It wasn't a slip of the tongue, a, miscon you know, a, a, a misspeaking. And for alleged constitutional conservatives, 
uh, to say something like that, it should really actually read the Constitution, which, you know, freedom of religion is a pretty prominent part. I find it more than a little annoying that a leftist on CNN would begin lecturing about religious freedom in the United States after we just got done with multiple years of CNN and other networks persecuting Christian bakers for not wanting to participate in gay weddings, which, by the way, the Supreme Court ruled in favor of the Christian bakers. What we appear to have here are leftists in the media defending an Islamicist tool of subjugation and oppression of women. I mean, do people on CNN think that women should be subjugated and forced to wear the hijab? Because that's what's happening all over the world. Women are dying in opposition to the hijab. Think about this for a second. CNN is raking this woman over the coals because she's standing up against a tool of oppression that would be used against her if people like Omar had their way. And the same way you just said that constitutional conservatives have got to think about what Piero said, social values voters and Christian voters and pro-clutchers and the people who have all the trouble when uh, other people do crazy things should also really question themselves and look at themselves in the mirror and say, why are we listening to this guy? Yeah, Anna Navarro, supposed Republican on CNN. What does happen when the other side says crazy things? Well, nothing happens. The media circles the wagons, defends that Democrat, and then attacks their critics. Make no mistake, this is a one-way street. Anytime a Democrat or some left-winger in the media gets called out for past statements, nothing happens to them. They don't lose advertisers and they don't lose their jobs. There's nothing hypothetical about this either. Old anti-gay tweets made by Joy Reid resurfaced, but does she lose her job? Does she lose advertisers? Nope. Was there a push by the media to destroy her? Nope. Of course not. Why would there be? They're on the same side. They have the same agenda. This isn't about principles or morals. This is about political warfare. It's pretty clear at this point that the Democrat Party and the left in this country want all dissenting voices either completely censored, silenced, violently shut down, or forced off the airwaves using campaigns like the one we're discussing right now.